Hey everybody, it's Tiana and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about five things I wish I would have known before I started my candle business. Let's jump into it. Alright, so I've been noticing that during this lockdown that we've been having, a lot more people have been emailing me um, about starting a candle business and I've noticed an influx in this video here, how to start your candle business, an influx in views. So a lot of you guys are here because you're interested in starting a candle business. There are some things that I learned along the way that I wish I would have known before I started. So let's jump into those five things. Now in no particular order are these things I just was jotting down some stuff in my notebook and I decided I would share some things with you guys so one thing I wish I would have known before I started my candle business was learning how to create um, an inventory system no matter how small your business is it's really important to learn these things right from the beginning because when it comes to um, filing taxes which we'll talk about in just a minute you are going to need to figure out your inventory now let me just talk about why this is so tedious especially for like a candle business so when I talk about inventory you're going to need to know your starting inventory and your beginning inventory so this means even for fragrance oil so for instance this is a 16 ounce jar or bottle and 16 ounces let's just say for the sake of the video i don't know i forget how much these cost 14 dollars i'm not sure so let's just say one 16 ounce bottle cost me 14 dollars well if i have only eight ounces left in this 16 ounce 16 ounce bottle that's now uh seven dollars so just to think about that you have to keep track of how many ounces are in your bottles um, when you make a candle batch and all of that so it's really annoying after making each candle to have to go into your computer and update your spreadsheets speaking of spreadsheets that's how i keep track of my finances and inventory i will link some spreadsheets down below that you can purchase um, if you're looking to do that but what I did was I created like an inventory kind of chart here so that instead of having to log on a computer with my hands all waxy and stuff like that, I can just jot it down on this piece of paper and then I can go in about once a week and then update my inventory. So this piece of paper documents the candle name, the wax I used in case you're someone that uses different waxes for different candles, the quantity of wax, was it a single wick or double wick, the size, quantity made, and all of that stuff. So anyways, I will link this down below. I have to make some revisions because there are some sections in here that I don't think are necessary. So I will link this candle inventory sheet down below for free if you guys are interested in picking that up yourself and starting to organize your inventory. So at the end of the year, you have the awesome task of counting your ending inventory. So that means you have to make sure all of your inventory is accurate in your spreadsheets. And not only that, how many wicks do you have on hand? How many um, jars do you have on hand? It gets a lot. So it's so much more easier if you start from the beginning um, tracking all of these things. Now, speaking of taxes, the second thing I wish I would have known is how to do all of my taxes and have all of the things that I need in advance to get ready for my taxes. So what I mean by that, like I said, the financial spreadsheet will be down below. So I use a financial spreadsheet and an inventory sheet. And I also use QuickBooks as a backup. So the reason I like the spreadsheets better is because you can um, just customize it more and know more about where your money's going. Whereas QuickBooks, you can't really um, do that so a spreadsheet is a lot more detailed but QuickBooks is kind of like my backup in case I forget to do stuff or I just need a backup and it's five bucks a month and I'd rather pay five bucks than have no backup um, but the spreadsheet is a little bit more detailed so when it comes to taxes I wish I would have known all of these things but I actually bought a online course um, to help me do that so I took a course um, how to do my taxes and prepare everything if you guys are interested this is not sponsored I'll link the course creator down below her name is Janet LeBlanc and she is a CPA accountant I think that's the same thing <laughs> a 
and she's also a handmade maker and her courses are really really nice so if you're someone who's in the same boat as me like this year in 2019 I did not do a good job at keeping track of my taxes so I am having to go back and input everything from the year but luckily I pay for everything online so I have all of those receipts and stuff online um, but yeah, I'll put her course down below if you're someone who needs to catch up on your taxes. So now we're moving on to number three, which is labeling guidelines. So I had no idea there was actual guidelines when it came to labeling your candles. All of the YouTube tutorials that I watched and all of the um, creators and everything, they've never really talked about these guidelines before. And I think a lot of people just don't know about them. So I actually didn't know about them until a couple years into my business, but I didn't change my labels because I had already made them and it was such a hassle. I have never heard of anybody getting caught or fined or anything for not having the proper labeling on their candles but it's always good practice just to go ahead and do everything the right way. So let's go ahead and jump into my computer so I can show you a little bit more about these guidelines. So here we are on an info page on Candle Science, which I'll link down below, but they tell you a little bit about the fair packaging and labeling guidelines. So what these guidelines should include are a statement of what kind of product you are selling. So you need to make sure candles is somewhere on your packaging, the name of your business, and then also the place of your business. So if you can see here, there are, there's a lot of confusion about if you, sh if you should put your full address on the labeling. Um, and here are some exceptions right here that we'll go through. Here you see the statement of the place of business shall include the street address, city, state, and zip code. However, the street address um, may be omitted if this is already listed and publicly available. So meaning if you have your address somewhere on your website, your address of business somewhere on your website, and also if you have an email list, that is required at the bottom of every email you send. So if you're already sending out emails, your business address will already be in those emails readily available. Most likely you'll have a contact us page where you'll have your business address. Um, if your business address is your home address, that would be the address you use. A lot of people don't like putting their home address all over the internet. So that's where something called virtual mailboxes come into play and you can purchase these for pretty inexpensive and they are a physical address that you can attach to your business and then that is now your business address. So sometimes these virtual mailboxes can cost as little as 10 bucks a month or so. So go ahead and look at those options but that is just a little bit more information about what you should have on your label um, Another important thing to have on your labels are, of course, if they're candles or wax melts, and then you should have the net weight. And so you need to make sure you weigh how much wax is in your jar and don't go by the ounces your jar holds, which is liquid ounces. So for instance, the candle that I have in front of me, I weighed it out, and even though this is a 16 ounce jar, the amount of wax that is in this um, jar is 11 ounces. So make sure you go by the weight. So that's just a little bit more information on the candle labeling guidelines. Now that we've cleared up what are these guidelines, I have an example for you. So this is my new candle that I've created and over time all of my candles are going to be kind of revamped and changed into this new style. So these, this is the caramel popcorn which is my favorite scent and you can see here how I did the labeling. So something that I've changed on my labels is I have um, where the candles are made and then the net weight in ounces and grams. Another thing that really threw me off guard when I first started my candle business, I had this crazy grandiose idea of the kind of candles that I wanted to make with all the toppings and everything like that. But when it actually came to shipping them, um, that was a whole different story. So the very first time that I shipped off my Christmas candle bundle was to a YouTuber and she was really interested in my candles. She wanted to show them off on her channel and the decorations that I had on top just weren't suited for shipping. So by the time she got them, they were all shattered and everything. So that really taught me a lesson on how to create something that is sturdy and durable for shipping. And it took a lot of testing and trial and error, but every time that I make a candle, I have to think about how it's going to ship. So there are a lot of designs that I'm just not able to create because shipping is just gonna be a nightmare. So on top of shipping, one thing that I wish I would have known before I started my candle business, which we're going into number five now, 
Um, I wish I would have known how to ship candles in the summer. Like there is, I live in Texas and I looked for all sorts of tutorials on how to ship candles in the summer. Nobody really had an answer. I searched all the forums, I've searched for YouTube videos, really nobody out there had information on how to ship candles in the summer. So I saw people who say I close my shop in the summer because I can't ship the candles. And there's other people that would say Sh put your candles in the freezer which don't do that because it shrinks your candles. So I'm going to share with you guys how to successfully ship candles in the summer. Okay, so when I first started my research on how to ship these candles in the summer, um, my first thing was maybe using a thermal mailer. So these are typically things that you would ship chocolates in, things that just tend to melt. So what they do is they keep the temperature inside pretty stable, but not for too long. So one thing that also helped me to keep the temperature a little bit stable inside the bag was to use these gel packs. So I use gel packs and not like water so whenever you're buying these packs which I bought mine from Amazon I'll put the link down below make sure to get the gel packs because um, from my understanding they have less condensation so this is what I use to put inside of the thermal mailer and I'll put a picture of the thermal mailer here because I don't have any on hand right now but I buy those from Amazon also so the first things first thermal mailer and ice pack this is how my candle boxes are looking now. They're actually about to change. I am ordering new boxes, more fancier boxes. And this is how the inside looks. So when you're shipping, just make sure that everything is super secure inside and you're not getting a lot of wobbling um, because that's just going to mess up the candle, especially with my type of like decorative candle. So what I also do is make sure the ice pack is not really near the actual box because then it's going to get wet and gross. So I'll kind of put a layer of maybe some type of craft paper or something over this just to make sure any condensation that does come, come through will go kind of towards that paper instead of getting the box all gross. So now that we've got the actual packaging down, it's very important to ship during certain days. So I've learned that you can only ship candles in the summer, Monday through Thursday. You can't ship on Friday or Saturday because the post office is closed on Sundays. So what that means is your candle will sit somewhere during that Sunday. I don't know if it's in a truck or in a hot warehouse. Just to be safe, you wanna use USPS, well, I use USPS priority mail shipping and that gets to the customer about two to three days maximum depending on where they are in the country. So that is how I get these shipped in the summer. I have had this many complaints about a melted candle. So it does work. So if you guys are wondering how do you cover those extra expenses with the ice pack and the thermal mailer, how do you cover that um, into your candle cost? So here's what I do. So if you're someone who offers your product for free shipping, like maybe your shipping is already included into the price of your um, product, consider charging for shipping in the summer, maybe $3 or so to cover the cost of the extra materials that you'll need to ship the candle. Or if you're someone who already charges shipping, consider raising your shipping prices just a little bit in the summer to cover the cost of the candles. Anyways, I hope that was super helpful for you guys. Again, any resources that I mentioned will be down below in the description. But until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.